but to mainstream. Uh, in the studio, I have with me some two very interesting guests because of the nature of discussion that we are going to have. Research on parenting 21st century children that should be able to take you back a little. Before I introduce them, just a preamble. Many parents today are feeling increasingly concerned not only for the well-being and safety of their children but also their own ability to take on roles as good and responsible parents. Makerere University has undertaken research on parenting. One to note especially that children are on their are in their holidays and there is a lot that goes on. I'm joined on set by Dr. Godfrey Siu, a senior lecturer at the Department of Child Health and Development Center, Makerere University. With me also is the Principal Social Development Officer, Family Affairs at the Ministry of Gender and Social, Ministry of Labor, Gender and Social Development, Ruth Mbaguta. Welcome. To the program, I just <laughs> misplaced those words, especially when it comes to the ministry. But I hope I can be excused for that. A very good morning. Good morning. My mind was rushing to the challenges and the gloom that we are facing uh, today when it comes to parenting. Let me begin with uh, Madame Ruth Maguta mm -hmm. to share with us the state of affairs. When somebody hears that parenting today is a huge challenge, it takes them aback and we begin to wonder why should it be a huge challenge when it is the role that people ought to be playing, especially as they grow older and begin to sire children. Thank you very much, our mm. moderator, and good morning the viewers. And I'm happy being here this morning. You're most welcome. Yeah, f to talk about especially parenting. Mm. We may not start going to that today, but how did it start for government to realize mm. that is a challenge? In um, 2015, there was a research done by Ministry of Gender on mm. violence against children. Mm. Though the report came in 2018, and before that also, the religious leaders met the president and requested to declare the family as a year of the family to ensure that we analyze further to find out what is happening in the family. Mm. And one of the challenges was about parenting. That we were getting children that were not guided, we are getting children that are getting out of hand, and we are in a 21st century, which we are talking about. Mm. Everyone is busy doing here and there. And so there was no government intervention to see what direction should government or the family take. Mm. In this, it came out that in the research of violence against children, it came out that the family was one of the hottest spots where violence of children happens. Mm. And of which you and me wouldn't realize, accept that it is, because there is no parent who doesn't like his child. But they, some unconsciously or consciously, there, there was... They administer violence onto children. Violence onto children. Mm. And this came together with the year of the family, which was launched by the president. And we developed a work plan. And this work plan, one of it was to see what is the state? What is the situation? Are we making an alarm that is not there? And we requested academicians, we requested researchers, civil society to give us evidence mm. so that we can argue. And in this also, we also tried to find out what is it. And in the, that's how Makira came on board mm. and other universities. And Dr. Sue will give that history. Mm. But in this, we found out that what is the problem if there is poor parenting? And what we found out from the researchers and what we said, if there is poor parenting at an early age, mm. there is more likely of our children involving themselves in drugs, in smoking, in violence, and some unrisky behaviors of sexuality. Mm. And here we can see the HIV AIDS at that time was looming young, among the young people. Mm. And all this, no one could relate it poor parenting mm. and the situation today. So it is a challenge mm. of all of us because we left home at five. I left home at six. 
others even leave at midnight, what have you done with your children? Did you know how they slept? Did you know how they have eaten? How they have woken up? This is time for holiday. Have you talked to them? Have they seen you? So those are some of the challenges. Yeah. How do we balance That's right. the needs of what we are in and the attention to the children? Yeah. But also we find out that if children don't have enough time with their parents, there is no bonding. And if you don't bond, you don't have a relationship with your parent, then some of these challenges come up. And that's how the inception of Macquarie University and others came up to do some of the researches to give us evidence and so that we can be able to plan according to that. Okay, yeah. that's uh, very uh, conscience shocking when <laughs> you listen to uh, Ruth uh, Maguta there. Dr. Godfrey see you. Um, reluctant to ask for those findings <laughs> because I know they are green. Share with us. Well, thank you, Chris, and good morning, viewers and listeners. Mm. I'm really pleased to be here this oh, morning. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk about the subject that concerns all of us. Mm. As Ruth has said, the research conducted by government across the entire country mm. produced very disturbing statistics. Just an example, about 65% of the boys reported that in their lifetime they had been subjected to some form of physical punishment. 60% mm. of the girls were about that reported the same statistic. So this suggested that there was a problem. Mm. And this problem was occurring at home as Ruth has said. Yeah. So parents were the biggest perpetrators of harsh punishment, but also other forms of poor parenting. Mm. Now there was another issue. Government has found a problem, but there was no clear solution. Mm. What I mean is, at the time, we needed interventions. Mm. Unfortunately, when we looked around, there were just very few, a handful of evidence-based interventions mm. or programs to train parents that had evidence of effectiveness. So we said, what can we do? In fact, around the same time, Makere University a Department, Child Health and Development Center, mm. had also commenced re on research mm especially with the fathers. And we found that fathers are concerned about how they can contribute to raise their children properly. Mm -hmm. But then they did not have very clear strategies to do so. One of the main concerns of fathers at the time was the concern to raise respectful children. Mm -hmm. Every man was saying, I want my children to show me respect, but also <laughs> when they grow up, they succeed. Those outcomes should bring respect to the family. Mm. And so they wanted good behavior. Now, the only way fathers knew how to do this was by being harsh, by being strict, and sometimes by giving up when they realize that the children are not respectful. So we said, this is the time to intervene. There is need. The parents are demanding for parenting training. Mm -hmm. And so we developed a parenting program called Parenting for Respectability. Allow me interject. I would like to hear what the program uh, has in terms of uh, the threshold on how to parent <laughs> in order for a child to respect both you and other people and later bring respect upon the family. What I see is a psychosocial equation that needs to be solved. Let me ask this question. Many of us who are well over 35 were brought up in environments that administered physical punishment, punishment. as you would classify it today. How much of what we have not achieved is down to the fact that we were victims of that 
particular way of being treated. Is there a correlation between those two variables? Yes, there is definitely a correlation between how you were raised mm. and how you are likely to raise your children. Mm. No, no, forget how I'm likely to raise mine, yes. but how I was raised. Yes. How responsible is it for what I have not achieved or become that was desired by those that saw me growing up? Okay, so many parents have good intentions as they raise their children. That's right. They want them to grow up as good children, good citizens who will be productive, successful in life. Mm. And so parents try their best to do what they can. That's right. But unfortunately, sometimes they don't have a clear strategy to do that, that is in a way that is uh, acceptable, that is respectful to the children, mm. and that ensures that the children grow up knowing that I'm being supported to achieve these goals by my parents. So for example, a lot of us say our role as parents is to provide, especially the men. Mm. But we know that provision Shelter, alone is not... Shelter, food, <laughs> school <laughs> fees. <laughs> if I'm paying school fees, mm -hmm. you people are having meals the way you want them. Mm -hmm. You're under a good shelter. Mm -hmm. You can go to the uh, jumping castles, whatever they call them, yes. on weekends. An average father understands that they're doing their job. <laughs> yes, exactly. But then the problem is mm -hmm. that parenting mm. has many dimensions. That's if you right. want to be a good parent, mm. it is not only measured by providing. That's right. There are other things that we have to do mm. as parents. One is being available mm. and providing time for the children, mm. time to connect and nurture a relationship and build that child up. Parents, fathers especially, are supposed to be nurturers. Mm. And so being available for the children, for children to consult you, to talk to you, and for you to give uh, a children an opportunity to hear from you, to be role modeled by you. If you are not available for that, children are never going to have an opportunity to grow up as children who have been nurtured. Okay, I'll be returning to you shortly on what you set as the right threshold for parenting that you hope will be part of the training manuals that you could be uh, about to roll out. And let me return to a principal social development officer. All I hear there is uh, the ability to offer psychosocial support in the construction of the ideal family setting mm -hmm. where the parent is available, like Dr. says, mm -hmm. to consult on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You've looked at the challenges that are perhaps responsible for the disconnect. Why men and women who have children are unable to do the parenting. Mm -hmm. Have you understood those challenges and perhaps cut some bit of slack uh, for these men and women? Thank you very much. Maybe if I start back from the question of Dr. Seal mm. on how you are parented, if it has affected you. Mm. You may no, ne not necessarily understand that it has affected you or it has contributed towards you. Uh -huh. But it depends on how you behave. And I think that's why he was bringing out that how you were parented determines on how you are going how to you parent. parent. But let me give an example. You were parented by a parent who didn't mind of what happens to you, how you sleep, how you move, whether you come in at late or not it affects even on your work. Mm. You will always never be responsible. Mm. You are always someone who thinks I can go about it without any direction, without anything, because of the way you were brought. But on the other positive, you are someone who can be innovative. Mm. Because of that, you were innovative, you were able to find out your ways, because no one was directing you. Mm. But the worst, you have no love. Oh. You don't feel for others. Because the love you didn't get, you'll never give it to others. If I come back to this, now you are the father mm. who were parented in that way. You are now a parent, you've married, the wife needs your love, the children need your love. You don't have the love. You don't appreciate the you whole idea of love. I was not loved. How does it matter? You are my wife, I married you, what is it? You are the children, you have to perform. There is no feeling that these are part of you because of the way you are grown up. Mm -hmm. And this one is what we are seeing today. People love each other. They go they, until they come, they come to us parents and we marry them off and they go to church or the mosque or anywhere. 
But along the way, because of that love that someone missed, because of that dictatorship or the, the way they were brought up, uh -huh. now comes back to the family. And we find out, but why? These people are just young. What has happened? The same to the wife you have married. Wow. Uh -huh. And then now, because of the parents you had, we are growing up responsible for other things. Even for you, you have no responsibility. You've seen where parents are taking children at the age of two years, one year, into the nursery. When would you bond with this child? You've seen where girls who are married and they don't want to breastfeed because their breasts will fall down. What is it? And we just see it like that. You are, your wife is, see, is pregnant and you don't have any courtesy of saying, let me go with her to the antenatal and find out what would be the problem. Leave alone the stressful situation uh -huh. that you can give that can impact from on the researchers the yeah. on the baby on that the is coming up. So as us in family, you find it becomes very hard when you get such a family case mm. that you want to handle. You have now to analyze further on how these people were parented right. in order to help this family through the psychosocial support. So it is so much that it becomes a cycle mm. of how you are parented, you are parenting, and that's how the family you are making. And be, until you break that cycle, mm -hmm. that you can make a, head, a headway through to help. When it comes to rectifying what appears to be okay. a very chronic a problem mm. on the part of government you're from the Ministry of Labor mm. uh, gender and social development mm. the government grapples to interact <laughs> with the average citizen mm. on uh, other aspects of uh, public service so I'm wondering if there has been a bit of uh, tension and a lack of access between these two parties, mm. the government and the citizen. Mm. When it comes to teaching somebody how to parent, it's a very intimate and close encounter. How are you going to do it? Are you moving to people's homes? Are you asking parents to come to a designated place and learn how to parent? Take us through how you're going to go about this. Thank you, moderator. Now, as you hear as a challenge, it mm. is still a challenge. This is a young unit mm. that was established in 2007, but parenting is a multi-sectoral implementation program okay. that we are not doing it alone. Yeah. And, but as government, we have structures up to the parish level. And uh, with the help from the research and the, the documents which we will be telling you towards the end that we have developed, mm. we are putting down how the structure will go and uh, how the parents will be reached. Mm. It can be a case that they will go case to case, but it can be in a group. Mm. And if it is a group, it helps from learning from each other. And so we feel the group may be better unless this is an individual case mm. that would need case to case. Okay. But we have structures as government from the national to the district to the sub-county and to the parish. And through other agencies mm. like churches, like mosques, like the NGOs, mm. they have people that are going up to the family right. level. I'm and afraid the time together. is not our very best ally. Mm -hmm. Allow me to uh, give the opportunity to Dr. Godfrey see you to wrap this up with the threshold that I needed you to help us with. Mm -hmm. Who is the ideal parent and who is faltering? According to the research. Yes, so according to our research, mm. an ideal parent is a parent who is available to the child, mm. a parent who shows Pay love. Pay attention. To the child, mm -hmm. is okay. connected to the child, mm. a parent who also appreciates the mother or father of that child yep. and work together. A family where there is unity. Mm. Because absence of unity among the parents is a risk factor for poor mm. parenting. There is no way mm. that child can Parents. ever be parented well, well when father and mother are in perpetual conflict yeah. or they are separated. Mm. The child is neglected. So we are emphasizing to families, especially spouses, that if you really want that child mm. to grow up, 
to a person that okay. you like, we must support, we must work together. And so our parenting program recruits fathers and mothers, mm. especially to say that this is the time for us to jointly parent our children. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Godfrey Siu, Senior Lecturer at the Department of Child Health and uh, Development Center at Makere University. And uh, many thanks to you too, Ruth Maguta, Principal Social Development Officer, Family Affairs at the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. That will do it for this uh, Tech Note. For the child is well-being, love your spouse, love your partner. We shall be right back.